Welcome to the Grateful American Radio Show, hosted by author and publisher David Bruce Smith. What did George Washington do that you might not know about? What did Abe Lincoln know that could change the way you think about the Civil War? You'll learn about all that and more on this special show designed to restore excitement in American history. Let's get started. What was the first step toward emancipation in U.S. history? That's but one of the questions we're posing today to historian Alita Black, a research professor of history and international affairs at the George Washington University. And she is also the founding editor of the Eleanor Roosevelt Papers, a project designed to preserve, teach, and apply Eleanor Roosevelt's writings and discussions of human rights and democratic politics. Welcome to The Grateful American Show. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, your co-host, here along with David Bruce Smith, the founder of the Grateful American Foundation, which is dedicated to restoring enthusiasm in American history for kids and adults, too. So welcome to the show, Alita. Oh, Hope, I'm so happy to be here, and thanks, David. This is going to be fun. So before we launch in, Alita, we have to tell our audience about your amazing background. Of your many accomplishments, you're the 2001 Person of Vision Award winner from the Arlington County Commission on the Status of Women, and you're also the recipient of the James A. Jordan Award for Outstanding Dedication and Excellence in Teaching from Penn State University. You've also written teacher's guides for PBS documentaries and served as an advisor for other documentaries prepared for the History Channel, A&E, and Discovery Channel. So for our first question, I'm going to throw this over to David. Okay, so we're celebrating a number of important anniversaries right now. The 50th anniversary (laughs) of Selma and the 150th anniversary of the Lincoln assassination and the end of the Civil War. Mm -hmm. How do you think Reconstruction would have played out if Lincoln had lived? Well, David, the reason that I wanted to be on this show is because you always ask the best questions. And I don't know how to answer that except to say this. I think it would have been different. We know that within a week before John Wilkes Booth murdered Abraham Lincoln, that Lincoln was in fact talking publicly about voting rights for African American soldiers who fought in the Civil War on the side of the Union. And some historians of great note argue that in fact that was the tipping point for Booth to really push him over to murder. And so if in fact Lincoln had lived, you know, it's open to debate whether or not voting rights would have eventually been extended, but I really can't believe that Lincoln would have not launched a national debate on voting rights for African Americans who risked their life. And so if, in fact, that happened, then you would have a whole new concept of Reconstruction. And it could have, but we don't know how that would have ended. It could have made the white Democratic South even more crazy and made the force acts and the revival of the Klan happen earlier. Or, in fact, it could have sent a signal to say, we fought this war, We've got to figure out how to come together. We have ended slavery, but emancipation is not just freedom from slavery. It's the freedom to become a citizen. And then the huge battle would have been, what does citizenship mean? And I think that is the quintessential conversation that we're still having today. And Lincoln could have played a huge role in helping frame that debate. How would he have assessed emancipation today? Because there are more slaves, really, (laughs) now than there were then. I mean, there's female slavery, there's (laughs) drug slavery, I mean... I mean, there's trafficking, Mm -hmm. there's, um, there's forced labor all over the world. Well, it's hard for me to project because as a historian, I'm not supposed to do that, but we all do it. What I do know is that were they alive today, that Abraham Lincoln and Eleanor Roosevelt 
would be two of the most articulated, articulate, risk-taking voices against trafficking for a living wage and trying to figure out how to challenge us all to understand that we have the courage to be the better angels of our nature. So talk a little bit more about the connection between Roosevelt and Lincoln, Eleanor Roosevelt, and what she learned from him and some of her heroes from the Founding Fathers era. Well, Eleanor always believed that we are all on trial to show what democracy means and that America was always growing and always challenging and that democracy was sort of like a rubber band. You know, you could stretch it and it would do more and then it would contract a little bit and you'd stretch it again and it would go forward and it would come back. You know, and Franklin certainly thought that. You certainly have Jefferson flirting with that. The founding fathers that Eleanor really embraced the most were Franklin and Payne, but for very different reasons. Franklin, because he understood where we would be down the road. For example, Franklin was the only one of the founding fathers who from the start really argued against slavery and understood that women needed to be educated and understood that the whole citizenry needed to be educated. That's why we have you know, the beginning of the public schools. That's why we had the beginnings of public libraries. And so Eleanor was devoted to Franklin. She loved Paine's sort of grand rhetoric of, you know, these are the times that try men's souls. And Eleanor believed that for people to take risks, especially to take risks in to build a new nation, they had to have a vision that was not only about themselves but about others.